What it do, flight crew? FTC. Flight team stand up! Craziest shoes in NBA history. Let's check it out. From the most expensive shoes in here. NBA history to a pair of sneakers you can make a phone call on. Oh, yeah, yeah what is real, man? These are the craziest shoes in NBA history. What the hell is that? Come on, man. I can see these hundreds of millions of dollars. How many shoes do you own now? Around 4,030 shoes. And we got to start with Shaq. Cause he designed one of the weirdest shoes of all time. The shot. I'm not even gonna lie, bro. That's gotta be the most frustrating thing, high key in me. Like it's kind of like a blessing not to have like a crazy out the world foot size. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're a size like 17, 18, 20, bro, you know damn well you never get any of the sneaker releases, bro. Not one of them. You have to customly get them made, wait longer than everybody else. Boy. The phone. Yeah, he right here, flash right here. Hold on. Flash. I don't even remember what size that was, 17, 20 or something. What up? This man Shaq is dunking and dialing. That's crazy. But what's even crazier are LeBron's shoes. Because he got a pair of sneakers that are worth 100,000. Really? See, in 2018, LeBron reached a career milestone, scoring 30,000 points. All and the people wanted to congratulate was. him on his achievement. So they called up the shoe surgeon and created the craziest pair of shoes LeBron had ever seen. The gold LeBron 15s, 24 karat gold, iced out with 238 diamonds over genuine crocodile skin. And to top it off, a diamond encrusted lion pendant, all Damn. worth over a hundred grand. Y'all paying those? Y'all buying those? These kicks are beautiful. But the shoe game is always buy this whip, pretty. I'd rather buy Michael Jordan's got a pair or of something. sneakers that almost got someone killed. Back in 1995, when Jordan came out of retirement, Nike welcomed him back Concord. to the NBA. It's crazy because when the Concords got released, like back, I think, like 2011, 2012. Y'all remember that Christmas? Whenever that, not the recent Concord released, like in 2018. The new, the, the, the later ones, like 2011, 2012 era. Like around not too far when Silly Bands was in style and, and all that stuff. I couldn't afford for like kicks throughout that time. I was way before like the two. So I think I was probably like in 11th grade or something like that. They had a similar situation like that too across everywhere. Like, the brand new impressive. signature shoe. The Air Jordan 11 Concords. My fans saw these shoes. I ain't gonna lie. I think the Concords are probably like the best like Jordans like. Like, you have to have those in your collection in order to call yourself a so-called sneakerhead. Because I don't even remember when, like, I had my, like, first retro car when I had first got, like, some decent, like, it was, I, I told y'all always about this. My 7th grade, like, uh, retro 11s that I had, they were, like, all blue. Uh, I think they're called a, like, retro 11 low-cut Aragon or something like that. May quote me if I'm wrong or whatever. But anyway, they were low-cut, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't, like, too crazy hype these type of shoes, but those were my first real retros. Other than, like, the toddler shoes that everybody usually gets, but first retro 7th grade anything. But anyway, it came with a uh, retro car, and the Concours was, like, always, like, the dream shoe to, like, always have, bro. You know what I'm saying? Lost like, their minds. I don't know. It's just so amazing. attractive to look at, bro. Something later, about it. They sold out immediately. And over the next decade, it became one of the most popular pair of Jordans ever. But in 2011, they that was right. Oh my gosh! Their love for these shoes too far, because when Nike decided to drop a retro version of the Concords right before Christmas, sneakerheads were willing to risk it all. People who waited in line all night long to get the new Air Jordan basketball shoes. Bro, no BS, bro. Like, looking back on this, like, everybody in the world as people got to do better, bro. You know what I'm saying? This is exactly what they want everybody to do. You know what I'm saying? You don't ever see no lines breaking in for nobody to, like, buy some property or to buy some assets. You don't even have to buy property. You know what I'm saying? It's just a, I ain't going to lie. Like, there's nothing wrong with buying property and, 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 and stuff like that if you know how to properly do it. But that's kind of, like, the most, like, common thing everybody says to somebody that has, like, some type of money. Oh, you got to just buy some property. Like, okay, you're not interested in property. There's so many other assets that can last, like, retirement fund. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm giving y'all free game and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? You never see lines like this breaking out the doors for someone to like go put money into like their you know retirement you know future and stuff like that or any type of meaningful asset like it's just crazy we got to do better in 2023 people you know what i'm saying and i guarantee if like there was no lines like this and it kind of would let the shoe but then again resellers exist but if they do let just the resellers get them bro i guarantee you bro like these shoes would go down in prices like these jordans would go from like what they is like nowadays like 250 for like a new release 220 or whatever most uh, at least whatever. You know what I'm saying? I guarantee you they will go down to like 
120, 130, you know what I'm saying? Stuff Lafayette like that. Square Mall just after 7 this morning. They literally broke a door off the hinges. This was the scene in Kansas City where people were sprinting oh through God. the halls. Burnt, man. Look, it look, came all my face. And I'm just arresting three other people for breaking down the hall door during all the chaos. Yeah. All that over a pair of J's. These fans are nuts, and so is Metal World Peace. Yes, he designed the weirdest pair of shoes in NBA history. See, back in 2014, Meta took his talents to China to play in the CBA. He was looking to pay his respects to the Chinese culture, so not only did he change his legal name to the Panda's Friend, but he also dropped a brand new signature sneaker called the Panda's Friend Shoes. Really? Available in black or white, but equipped with his very own stuffed panda. Yeah, this dude was hitting I threes remember these. with pandas on his feet. <sighs> Meta, these shoes are unbearable, dog. I mean, you wouldn't find them in my closet, but you might find them in PJ Tucker's. Because this dude has the biggest shoe collection in the NBA. See, over the years, yeah, everybody know about Tucker. Doing a little soul search, collecting <laughs> yeah, over 5,000 pairs of sneakers. 5,000? Where the hell do you even fit 5,000 pairs of sneakers? That's cool, well, PJ not only filled an entire room in his mansion with shoes, but he also bought a house just to store his sneakers. I ain't gonna lie, that's a flex, bro. PJ Tucker, and welcome to my sneaker loft. The loft is primarily for storage. There wasn't enough space in my house to be able to put And it's all free game, too. That's like how he attacks right off, too. Like, people don't even realize it. He just, like, marked all of that. Like, oh, he's, just, you know, working out of there, his business, whatever, this and that. Ooh, so Pretty much damn, he has a free crib, but not really, and really. And this place is a shoehead's dream. Because it's here that PJ stores the most valuable shoes in his entire collection. Like those? his Back to the Future Nike Max. Or his Stewie Class. Griffin LeBron 6s. And even this pair, PJ's custom Diamond Swoosh Air Force 1s. Worth really? over 250000 Jesus. A quarter mil for a single no, pair of fire. shoes. That's wild. But there's one pair of shoes. My man's got a G-Wagon more than PJ's box, entire collection. These are Dwayne Wade's Li Ning Way of Wade Force. They're so valuable, they require arm security just to transport. Yeah, this thing's strapped with diamonds and set. Bro, it's. Bro, arm security to transfer shoes, bro. Sapphires, set an eight. It's different if, well, obviously, Wade, who's not gonna have security if you're, you know what I'm saying, your stats, everything, celebrity, whatever. But, like, bro, just to transfer shoes, you're talking about just a couple of just people that are not Dwayne Wade just transferring his shoes, bro. That's wild. Gold with a solid gold tap. So in 2016, when they were put up for auction, they were valued at a ridiculous $4 million. Bro, if you buy these, you are an... Bro, you deserve to go broke, bro. Like, bro, what's the max anybody in right now watching this video paying for some kicks? Like, this, this is just out the line ridiculous, fam. Like, anywhere in the United States, you're living lavishly, bro, in a mansion with $4 million, dog. <laughs> like, even in L.A., the most waxing state, one of the most waxing states, you know what I'm saying, in the entire uh, U.S. Damn, for that price, your feet are looking pretty, but I can't say Bro, no, same. imagine wearing those types of kicks and still not pulling no girls in the club, bro. Like, you just absolutely down bad. The next pair. The uh, other way, not the paintings. ugliest sneakers in NBA history. See, in 2001... Adidas announced that the Kobe 2s were coming out. The fans were expecting something iconic. I mean, oh, we're talking about Kobe. When the world finally saw these shoes, they wanted to rip their eyes out. God damn! Adidas dropped the toaster 2s. Well, nah, man. Those? I'm not gonna Kobe. lie to you. Some of those Kobe Adidas was really underrated. Like, I rocked some of these. Like, the, those purple ones and the uh, uh, the white and purple ones, those are really fire. R.I.P. Kobe is darting the rest of those passengers. Um, no, nah, I think I think these and like those T Mac Adidas are like really really underrated and fire. I think just a lot of hype beasts just you know what I'm saying. God damn, Adidas dropped the toaster twos. Well, what the hell are those? And this Kobe, man said well, he was disgusted. So after the really? 2002 season, he met with Adidas executives. He paid him eight million just to cancel a shoe deal and get out of his contract. Nah, that's some boss stuff right there, bro. You pay a company eight million dollars to leave and get you out the contract and not drop any more of those sneakers. Ooh, these shoes were a disaster. But now it's, it's just a, it's, if it's like a plain like the black or white colorway like those those are really base but like the ones that are like purple like the the, the crazy looking exotic because those are fire. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have those teeth. Who's wearing these shoes? It's considered cheating. Yeah. What? 2010 Athletic Propulsion's Lab 
was on a mission. They wanted to design a pair of basketball sneakers that would change the NBA forever. The APL Concept Ones. And these shoes feature a special technology called Load and Launch, designed to increase a player's vertical jump over three inches. What? Where are these shoes at? I'm going undefeated in 2023! I'm going undefeated in 2023, bro. I'm about to be dunking on everybody. How you get these shoes? Somebody send me the link, bro. Load and Launch, designed to increase a player's vertical jump over three inches. What? No, because listen, a lot of y'all be laughing. Like, three inches is really a lot when it comes in basketball terms. Other terms, I can't defend you. <laughs> Just kidding. But, like, bro, like, these shoes, where are they at right now? I don't care the price. We are going undefeated in 2023 if I find these shoes. Because you guys see I'm really close. Because I was already dunking before I consistently was with the tube and everything on the internet, bro. But... Three inches late, I feel like that's literally all I'm off from. Because every time I try to dunk, it comes close, it just bounces off the back side, bruh. Where is he shoot? I'm about to look him up right after this video. No BS, bro. If I pop out with these shoes, bro, yeah. you know these why. These things gave you hops. And all of a sudden, he had old heads at the rec center looking like Giannis. So APL thought it was just a matter of time before the concept once took over the NBA. But instead, the league said no. Banning the shoes for quote giving players an unfair competitive advantage. They really be checking the shoes before it been a bad look for APL, but instead it was a blessing in disguise because APL turned the ban into a full blown marketing campaign. Four hundred dollars. It's, it's only four hundred. Turned the ban it's right here into a a, It's only four hundred dollars. Is it still the same price, bro? I'm about to buy like five pairs of these, bro. Full blown marketing campaign, and the shoe's been popular ever since. Now look. NBA might be worried wow. about APL. Why did I not? What they you? really gotta worry about are Montrez Harrell shoes. Hey, make sure y'all get a close up on Montrez Harrell shoes now. Montrez Harrell's different. You are deal. What's that? Look at the shoes. I wonder how much the No wonder why they kicked them off the Lakers, bro. Borrow his shoes. The man's rocking the ballerinas. That's fine. Bro, I know you did not just disrespect Iverson like that, bro. Borrow his shoes. Man's rock. This, bro, this is just blatant disrespect. To these are the, if y'all real senior heads, these are the questions. I actually have multiple pairs of these. And I had my first pairs of these types, not these exact shoes, but the Denver, the Denver Nugget Irison questions that was released like in the 07 08 season. I had them back when I was in seventh grade. I just didn't have the cameras on. Um, but, bro, how are you gonna, bro, Iverson, there's no way he approved this, bro, because Iverson is one of the realest to ever touch in sports, bro. Like, come on, Harold. There's no reason, there's a one, there's a reason why the Lakers are not, Talking you know what I'm saying, resign your contract or trade you, however right, you like to not on Jason Tatum's love, because his shoes can tie themselves. Really? Yeah, in 2019, I have a pair of JT shoes, with Nike the, uh, the, 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 you know those taco, uh, JT's? The first self-tying basketball shoes in the world. On the app, you can see you could. Unlacing it, tighten them up. Left, right, that tight. Left, right. And then you got all the different colors on the buttons right here. Oh, those are like those Jordan 11s. You know what oh, I'm talking wow. about? The uh, Back to the Future? Those shoes are ridiculous. But that's nothing compared to what we got coming up. Because one player's shoes almost ruined his career. Really? Oh, another shoe is edible. Yeah, I'll tell you guys all about that in a second. But first, we got to talk about our sponsor. All right, Drew, nobody cares about DraftKings. DraftKings, don't black me, man. There's a ton of ways to make watching sports. Like which team? Secure watching sports tour. Because this dude has got a pair of shoes that you can literally eat. Yeah. In 2018, Bro, you eat Hunter shoes, you have an instant Hall of Fame threat badge. Trolley, his favorite of course it would be hard. He wanted to honor him. So they created a six-pound, life-size gummy version of Harden's Volume 2s. Bro, Harden went from honey buns to gummy worms. My man, Harden. Yeah, what I do to nibble on those toes? But it'd be pretty tough, because there's only three pairs in existence. And they each cost $2,677. That's not bad. One buck for every point he scored. But what y'all personally wear? Unusual, you haven't seen cat shoes. Because he has the creepiest sneaker collection in the NBA. Really, Over cat. the years, Carl's been taking his Nike Hyper Dunks and putting a spooky twist on them. From his custom Friday the 13th shoes oh, to his Stranger Things sneakers. Even this pair of Oh, those games. are fire. I like the yeah. ones right there. Those oh, nice. shoe game is scary. I like those cats. Gary Irving's is a little too scary. See, ever since 2011, Kyrie. Kyrie first signed with Nike. He's been a pillar of sneaker culture. From legendary colorways to iconic collaborations, Kyrie's shoes have become an empire. 
I mean, by 2016, this Kyrie 3s were the best-selling basketball shoes in the world. Yeah, but they know them, them hype was just crazy. A year later, Kyrie dropped a pair of shoes that no one saw coming. The Kyrie 4 Confettis. And at first glance, these look like any other sneaker. Those are clean. These shoes were hiding something dark. Really? Because on the back of the shoe is the Eye of Providence, aka the Eye of the Illuminati. Yeah. And it's not only freaking me out, but it's freaking fans out too. Ugh, this thing is cursed. And so are Zion's shoes. Because one pair of sneakers almost ruined Zion's career. Oh, the dude gets February 20th, 2019. Zion laced up his Nike PG 2.5s for a primetime college game oh, against North Carolina. I'm glad he bounced back from all the injuries. Of fans, players, and celebrities in attendance. People were expecting to watch Zion dominate. But then, something crazy happened. Rebounding team, usually that's the North Carolina Tar Heels. Oh. And injured is Zion Williams. Yeah, that was like one of the first weirdest like shoe injuries I've seen. Zion's shoe literally exploded. I mean, damn, that could have destroyed the man's foot and ruined his basketball career. But thankfully, Zion was okay. That's and it turns so out, wild. this incident was such a big moment that these shoes are now worth a fortune. What would be the upper range that you could see this thing going for at auction? You know, I've seen NBA one on one game All Star jerseys go for 180000 It would not surprise me if it's out $250,000. A quarter mil for some busted PGs. Hey, that's crazy. Dion's a superstar, bro. Of crazy. We gotta mention Kanye West. Because this dude in the NBA? a pair of basketball shoes that got banned. Back in 2015, Kanye was trying to design the craziest basketball shoe the league had ever seen. So over the course of three years, he designed more than 300 concept sneakers, all to try to make the perfect shoe. And in 2018, he finally did it, unveiling to the world the easy basketball quants. These were the sexiest shoes he had ever released. Why would he so he was trying to get them out to NBA players immediately. But unfortunately for him, when the league saw how flashy they were, they kicked Kanye's dreams to the curb, banning the shoes for being too reflective. Huh? Now Kanye might have a few screws loose, but he's not the only one. Because we gotta talk about the craziest designer in sneaker history, LeVar Ball. See, LeVar is a scheme through and through. And in 2017, as his kids were being talked about as future NBA stars, he wanted to capitalize on all the hype. So he decided to create his very own sneaker company called the Big Baller Brand. And with his sons at his side, LeVar was ready to take BBB to the moon. So they started dropping signature sneakers for the whole family. D'Angelo got the Jell-O 3s, Lonzo got the Z-O 2s, Lamelo got the MB 1s, and hell, even LeVar got his own shoe. On the surface, it seemed like BBB was kicking the competition's ass. But in 2018, they got into some trouble with another BBB, the Better Business Bureau. It's after receiving hundreds of complaints from customers, talking about late orders, bad customer service, and poor quality of shoes, Big Baller Brand was officially given an F as their company grew. That's a bad and look. It's been downhill ever since. Man, I'm glad I'm not in LeVar's shoes. But I'm even <laughs> happy you rebound, not John bro. <laughs> His shoes sparked a worldwide uh, controversy. John Moran just dropped See, new sneakers. During the 2022 playoffs, Ja was hooping in one of his favorite pairs of kicks, his Kobe 4 preludes. When fans noticed something strange, Ja's shoes didn't look like ordinary Kobe's. The tongue was too short, the heel pattern was off, and the Nike swoosh Don't tell just me wasn't that. the right color. Yeah, they were fake. The people were wondering, why is a millionaire MB Bro, that is so... And obviously, this is not Josh's fault. I ain't gonna lie. That's been one of my fears, bro. Because, bro, like, obviously, bro, we all know Jaja is a multi-billionaire in the NBA, bro. Like, that's like, bro, anybody can get a pair of fake shoes by accident, bro. Especially you go to, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, random sneaker stores, mama pops. I'm not talking about, like, champs and finish line. I'm talking about, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like local family type of sneaker-owned places. Sometimes they don't be secret heads and stuff. They just be hype beasts, to be honest with you. And they just be, like, buying stuff everywhere. And they don't be getting a legit check, bro. Man, that is a... Man, that's embarrassing, though. EA player wearing knockoff Nikes. Well, just a few days later, 
it all became clear when Nike announced that they were suing StockX, one of the largest online shoe stores. It's crazy because I ain't, I ain't gonna lie, I thought this was like, not fake, but just people exaggerated it. I'm so happy I stopped, like, like shopping for sneakers on StockX, like, sh like what, mid-2021? Like, no cap. The only thing, I ain't gonna lie, I'm still stupid low-key. Like, I get clothes from StockX, but damn, like, I need to low-key stop just mess with StockX in general, bro. Like, that's terrible, bro. Y'all be coming with the green tag and everything, too. For selling too. fake Nikes. Yeah. Job that's off fake weird. Kobe's. And he didn't even know it. But what's even crazier are Michael Jordan's shoes. Because <coughs> MJ's got a pair of sneakers. That are out of this world. Oh, the hairs. Back in 1995, Jordan filmed one of the most iconic movies of all time. Space Jam. And while the movie itself is a classic, it's the shoes he wore during the film that really stole the show. Bro, I think Michael Jordan just had just a natural, like, born talent for fashion and shoes, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, ain't nobody yet to this day has, let's be 1,000% right now. 1,000%. Everybody just gather up, gather up, gather up, gather up, gather up. Bro, there's people that come close. The matching the uh, likeness of MJ shoes and the style of them and the looks of them, yes. But bro, ain't nobody came close to like topping. I feel like MJ is like you know what I'm saying shoes, especially like bro retro 11s and just general to mids like the high tops, whatever. Like the you know what I'm saying regular size. Like they literally like like shit on like 95 percent of every shoe in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like you have some clean pair of retro 11s and a mid fit on, bro. You know what I'm saying? You're going to turn next all the time. After like, filming Wrapped, MJ gave this pair of Jordan 11s to one of the crew members. Really? And years later, those shoes ended up on an episode of Pawn Stars, where That's they were revealed to be one of the most valuable pairs of shoes in the world. So what do you think they would go for? Just the fact that Space Jam is the highest grossing basketball movie of all time. And also, The Last Dance that did come out, which made all of Michael Jordan's memorabilia just go through the roof. I can see these selling for upwards of a million dollars. One. I ain't gonna lie, I, I was I was surprised it's not more. Cause how was Dwayne Wade shoes, whatever it was, just cause it has some bust down diamonds for a million. But like this thing right here, like bro, like you have to. I don't know. I thought it was gonna be like ten. That's a hundred thousand dollars per toe. God damn! It can't get any crazier than that. A hundred thousand dollars per toe is crazy. Yo, you come the on with this the single most valuable pair of Jordans in existence. These are the original Nike Airships. And oh. these shoes are historic. Because in 1984, when Jordan was just a rookie, he wore these sneakers in his first few NBA games, making them the oldest known Michael Jordan game worn Nikes. And with shoes that iconic, cold. sneakerheads would do anything to cop this pair. So in 2021, they were put up for auction. They became the most valuable pair what of jewelry retro on the planet, selling for an insane 1.47 million. Why are those retro? Like I'm God curious. Damn. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like those, those are like a basic ass. Damn, that's a whole lot of dollar for some shoes. 